ladies and gentlemen, this is the 29th episode of Barry Media Unrestricted. Thank you all for joining. I have a special guest in the building. This lady has done everything from collegiate diving, transitioning over to uh, the world of bodybuilding, and specifically um, IFBB figure competitor. We have Jasmine Amber Crombie in the building. Welcome. Yep. <laughs> Did I say your last name right? Abercrombie. Abercrombie, like, I'm no, sorry. No, Amber. Amber, yeah, okay, yeah. I even went through that in prep and still butchered. My, my apologies. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for, I can't thank you enough. We thank you for adapting to my schedule. Good to have you here. Um, let's pop off and start from the beginning. You're from the Houston area, right? Yeah. Okay. We <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in Sweetwater, Texas. Okay, okay. Basically, yeah, Houston. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And you started off, I guess you're, correct me if I'm wrong, but your athletic journey started off in um, swimming, right? Swimming and diving, or was it before that? No, um, before that, I did, um, well, I did all the sports. I, well, not oh, really. okay. I played basketball, ran track, but I, um, I did gymnastics for eight years, so that was my main thing. Ah, nice. Okay, okay. All right, and how did how did you like gymnastics? Oh, I loved it. It was everything. That's something that's taken off. I mean, gymnastics has always been a thing, but it's really taken off the last couple of years, especially with um, you know, with a couple of big names from here in Houston. Um, now, and so after gymnastics, what did you what did you do after that? Um, well, I didn't want to stop doing gymnastics, but um, I had back surgery, mm -hmm. then I had foot surgery, and then um, I dove for four months in high school, and then I was able to dive in college. Nice, okay. And I was going over your, uh, I guess like your profile from university, and you freaking killed it. Like, even like high school, most valuable diver at Side Creek High School in Houston, like, that's, that's impressive, impressive, excuse me. So was that something that just came... The diving just came natural? Um, pretty much. I already knew how to flip, so... Okay. Just landing in water, pretty much. <laughs> From a, uh, so, uh, that, that's good. I didn't think about that. You know, huh. I'll be darned. So, yeah, you, gymnastics is... Diving is kind of, huh, okay. I get that. That's good. In college, uh, you went to uh, University of North Texas, right? Yeah. That's the uh, Mean Green, right? It is. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm a big college football, just a college nerd, but particularly football. Um, and let's see, it's 2014, 2015, you were named Conference USA Diver of the Week on February 10th. So, again, in college, you're freaking killing it. Um and, oh, and I gotta thank you, like we talked about in prep. Um, there's a particular school that I'm not too fond of, SMU. Being a, <laughs> I went to University of Houston, so that's like one of our arch rivals. And you put second highest at SMU. So um, you just went there and just slaughtered them. So thank you for that. Um, I appreciate that. Houston Cougars everywhere, thank you for that. Um, so what, you know, being just a, I, I go as far as calling you just a powerhouse is swimming and diving or diving, excuse me, in um in college. What what was that like? Um, I was new to it. Um, I did gymnastics like I said, only four months. Most people were have been swimming and diving their whole lives. Yeah. So, um everybody else was kinda on the end of burning out whereas everything was new to me. Ah, uh, yeah. So okay. it was pretty fun. I still got to flip. So, I was happy. <laughs> As, that's what's up. Um, did you ever I mean, go into different meets and everything? Did, did um, anything ever... Did you run any difficulties with, with diving? Or, um, any, any, like, crazy stories or anything? Um, no. It was, it was just getting used to the sport and... Mm -hmm. Still feel like relatively I wasn't in it that long. To okay, so you did all four years of college, right? Or mm -hmm. okay, yeah. and that's one thing that 
people, and I even tend to forget myself, is that especially with collegiate athletes, there's a point in time where you get burned out because like you alluded to, other people on your swim team have been probably swimming since they were, you know, babies, you know? <laughs> and so you get burned out because I, um, I mentored a, a lady at U of H that was on a um, basketball team. And um, she was also like a part-time runway model. And I remember we were doing a photo shoot and she broke the news to me. She's like, ish, I'm not coming back to basketball next year. And I'm like, oh, you mean you taking half the year off? Like I'm trying to negotiate. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, I'm not. I'm, not. I'm like, well, what? Why? She's like, no, it's nothing with the school. It's nothing with coaching. She's like, I'm just burned out. She's like, I've been playing basketball since I was 12. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I get that. And then, you know, being on the road and, you know, everything that goes with training and studying and everything. So I, you know, I get that. Um, so what transitioned you from swimming to in the world of bodybuilding and particularly uh, figure? Um, nothing specific. Just kind of um, fell into it. Um, after college, I worked somewhere, and people had always asked me if I was competing or a bodybuilder, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. Um, then I worked with somebody that knew of um, SBM. Okay. So they were like, oh, I really want to do a show. I know them. They had known um, Amber Utsi. Okay. And um, just met up with them one day, and they were like, okay, you'll do this show. <laughs> they just told you, just like, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got on the calendar here. Okay, you'll do that one. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, yeah, speaking of Amber, she's, I think she was like my second guest on this show when I started this thing last year. Shout out to Amber um, and her adorable dog, Case. Um, what, uh, how did you meet Amber, specifically? Um, I don't remember when exactly I met mm -hmm. her. I probably just met her at the gym during one of the team workouts or something. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Um, so, by, so I will assume, because according to your contest history, your first contest was in twenty seven April of 2017. So is that when you kind of like transition from, I guess, started training to be a, a bodybuilder per se? Uh, I always lifted and I was, I don't, I don't consider like um, how we lifted in college lifting because yeah. it was for diving and it was they're totally different yeah yeah so i lifted how i wanted to and then i looked a certain way and then i got with the coaches and they were like okay do these body parts do these exercises so i would consider that more so lifting towards bodybuilding and then with the whole diet and everything so mm -hmm. like i had abs before i started but just bringing it all together for a stage look and learning the poses and everything gotcha something different completely different than just working out Huh, I never, you just, another realization, I never realized, like, every dive from male and female got abs. <laughs> I, mean, I never noticed that before until now, like, okay, that, yeah, huh. every Every gymnast, too, pretty much. That, yeah, that, yeah, gymnast, too, absolutely. Yeah, you gotta have a strong core to do flips and poses on beams for long periods of time and, and whatnot. Um, so, what was it like? You go to Team SBM, and they basically say, oh, you're going to do a contest, here it goes. What what was that like, like getting ready to prepare for your first contest, going, you know, going into that world? Uh, it was all a blur. Like, I'm, I'm not that great an athlete. I don't know the rules. I don't know the important people. Like, luckily, I joined a team where they were there, and they were taking care of me. They made sure I was where I was supposed to be, and I knew everything I needed and just a great like support system um, I'm glad I started there and not some other team that just kind of threw me to the wolves mm. but um, yeah it was good um, they just walked me through everything told me who I needed to contact for certain things it was okay. a very it was a good place to be good yeah. yeah to start off yeah I've met a lot of people through SBM over the years through you know mainly Amber and aggravating her to death but <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, they just, even outside of it, they're just quality, good people. people yeah. yeah, they just care and, you know, want to see people succeed in, in their various, you know, things that they do and whatnot. Um, yeah, so shout out to Team SBM. Um, so, were you nervous at your first contest? Cause, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I know look, sometimes the internet 
doesn't give correct information, but your first contest was April 2017 at the NPC City Limits Championship, right? Yeah. Did I get that right? Okay, so internet wins for once. Um, so what, what was it like going to your, your first contest? Uh, so all the sports I do, it's always judging and literally like all eyes on you, but I was scared like all over again. Yeah. Um, so I, well, the division I do, have to wear heels. Um, I have spina bifida mm -hmm. and with my nerve damage, I can't feel certain parts of my feet. So walking in heels is tragic. Gotcha. And so my shoes were different, but I had contacted the judges and they were like, okay, we understand. Like, yeah, that's fine. So I went on stage and like I was oiled up and in the lights and sliding everywhere. And I basically got escorted off the stage and that was, that was great. Oh, then, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. A higher up who wasn't even part of the show personally came backstage to yell at me. So I literally cried between shows, didn't even want to get back on stage. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear very, that. Very God, dog, that's wow. Yeah. So if you want me asking, like, what if you warned them ahead of time, you know, of your condition, and they said it was okay, why is someone yelling at you? Because someone should have told a guy, like, hey, she warned us ahead of time, you know. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to make I'm trying to make sense of it. Make it make sense. So, exactly, make exactly. Sense. Yeah, like you you gave them a fair warning and. Yeah, they, they weren't even part of the show. They weren't a judge or anything. Just oh, they were personally came back just to yell at me. Oh man, they're well known in the community. So. Okay, I, I, I'll leave it at that. I ain't trying to. <laughs> even though the name of the show is unrestricted, I don't want no drama. I don't want no smoke. I got enough stuff on my plate. But <laughs> holy cow, man! I'm sorry you had to go through that. That that sucks. Yeah. Wow. And kudos for you for sticking with it because. Later that year, if I'm correct, see my notes here. Okay, yeah, later that year, in November 2017, you competed at NPC National Championships, right? How did that go? Um, still a ball of nerves, um, but it went better. I kind of more so knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. The stage is really big, but um, just felt more comfortable with it. Um, between those two shows, I actually had surgery. So, but I was in prep. So, well, I wasn't in prep because I had to rest after surgery. But mm -hmm. I had prepared for that first show, but I didn't want to get on stage and look like I didn't deserve to be there. Gotcha. So yeah. it was just tunnel vision for that. Um, I don't know. I feel like I looked the part and was just a bit more confident. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. And you did good. You placed top five in uh, figure class E. Yeah. Um, how, how was that at the end, like, you know, given the surgery and everything, and especially given what we just covered from the previous show and you placed top five? Mm -hmm. how, how did that work for you? Well, how, how did you feel with that? Well, again, like, uh, not that great athlete. I didn't realize, <laughs> like, I guess I, in the moment, I never realized, like, it's a big deal mm -hmm. and looking back some people are like oh I finally made it to nationals after eight years of bodybuilding and yeah so I was just like okay mm -hmm. got top five all right so like what's next like <laughs> where did yeah. we go <laughs> yeah that's what's up that's that's what's up so did you run at any complication preparing for the November show um no I, th I had surgery again after that one okay okay yeah that's okay. Um, and then a couple months later, we go into 2018. Um, you compete in the NPC Universe Championships um, on June. And actually, before I ask you about that one, if you could break down, because one thing that always throws me off, and I know I, I know it, but in the NPC shows, there's okay, you got category figure. And under that, you have all these, I guess I call them subcategories, like, you know, G, E, A, can you define it? And it basically, those are all based on height, right? So they yeah. basically break all the ladies up in the, your figure competitors, so you have to have a certain look, but then they break you all down to height, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess, is it the, because you're what, 5'6", five, 5'7"? Five, uh, I think most people agree, and PC, like, <laughs> robs you on height a little bit. I thought I was 5'7", but I'm like, 
five six five six and a half on my okay. like, NPC car. But okay. yeah, they uh they just um I think some people keep their height cards show to show, or they just measure you when you come in. Okay, okay. So I guess the higher the letter in the alphabet, then the taller you are. Okay, so because I was looking at this and it's like going into the uh, 2018 show that we're about to talk about your class G. I was like, okay, well, what the heck is when I was you know rushing and getting everything ready today. I'm like, okay, so what the heck is A? Like, so A must be chicks that are four foot one or something, and we just move up on the alphabet. Yeah, I don't know how strict it is. I think it just depends on how many people show up. That too, and yeah, then you're they, right. They'll break it down from there. Okay, cool. So, class, uh, 2018 MPC Universe Championships, June of 2018, um, you placed first. Congratulations in Class G, earned your pro card. Um, how was that? Uh, it was good. I was, I was a lot calmer. I had been there before. Um, I was with a lot of other SBM people, so um, it was comfortable, and the, the stage was smaller, and... I don't know, it's just more relaxed. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so you think the relaxation had a had a part to do with it? Um, no, um, a lot of it was just like a paying attention to details during a mm. prep. So it's not even like the lifting or the eating for me, it's literally like sleeping and getting water that makes a huge difference in my physique. Gotcha. So um, just minor details body work, making sure I was even, making sure my posing was on point, and just um, my stage presence was better. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I was really nervous, and the other ones I kind of freaked out and was too stiff, but made it nice and flowy, I guess. Nah, it's, it's funny you mentioned sleep, because I was telling um, a friend today when I was getting set up here, I was like, I... At times I wish I didn't have to sleep, because I, you know, there's so much I want to do in a day, but then sleep is vital for the human body whether if you're an athlete or not you know yeah. it's like well gotta sleep gotta stop fighting sleep and get sleep but then i'm behind on stuff or whatever but you know hey it is what it is at the end of the day so people out there sleep is important and actually for bodybuilders sleep is crucial and if i'm getting this wrong please correct me you okay so you go to the gym you work out you lift and when you sleep that's when the muscles regenerate, right? Because, like, sometimes when you lift, the muscles are broken down, right? Am I yeah. getting that right? I mean, every time, if you're lifting hard, yeah. Heavy, um, just important for muscle recovery and, um, like, cortisol levels, stress, there we go, water, yeah. tension, all that. Okay, gotcha. And uh, let's move right along here. So, the next year, um, 2019 you competed in the I call it they got I got the technical name for it but screw it I call it the Candace Carter Pro that's what it, <laughs> that's what because when I was doing a research and I went on the NPC site and, and I'm looking they got this long name and then I clicked on you know your pictures and I'm like I'm looking at the band I'm like oh that's the Candace Carter show why they got this like you don't call the Arnold Classic this long ridiculous <laughs> Columbus, Ohio. It's like it's just the Arnold Classic. So why can't we call the Candace Carter the Candace Carter? Like yeah. so, going forward, people who are listening, we just go call it the Candace Carter Show, which is like that's in like what North Dakota, South Dakota, one of the North Dakotas, Dakota, North yeah. Dakota. Okay, so that was on a uh, March 2019. So that was your pro debut, right? Okay, so what was the training like uh, for that? Um, kind of just more regimented to what the judges are looking for. Like, uh, I stopped training arms and I haven't trained arms in like two years probably. Yes, yeah, like, wonderful arms. You don't need to train <laughs> arms. <laughs> Thank you. That was the first thing I noticed when you walked in and you even had on a hoodie and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, let's get set up. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. You're um, welcome. Yeah, um, just the regimen, looking for exactly what the judges want. Um, fine tuning, got a new suit. Um, I came in 10 pounds lighter okay. for my pro debut, so even more rest recovery, all that, I was, yeah, I mean, just when you get that light, you just feel drained all the time, but they liked it, so that's what okay. it takes. Okay, and, um, how many, how many, um, 
paperwork this year because usually actually I've noticed too that's a lot of people especially on the women's side of things uh, women let me be more specific that's a lot of figure competitors first show I guess maybe because of the time of year that it happens because I think going back to Amber I think that was her pro debut too yeah, if I'm not mistaken the year before it though okay yeah, yeah. Um, what was just the overall um just the, the ambiance of that show. I, I haven't met Candace, but I follow on social media. I know she's based out here in Houston. I've interviewed a lot of people on this show that you know personally know her and you know hang out with her. And it's just like she seems like such a bubbly, cool person. I know she just had a baby. Congratulations if her or her party's listening. But they one day I could get her in here. Like how how was her her show? Um, well, just pro shows in general are just a whole new ballpark. They treat you really well for the most part. I haven't been to many, but mm -hmm. um, swag bags and all that. Um, ah, goodie bag, yeah. <laughs> but, um... Like you walking away with something. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was good. Just professional. Make sure the um, pro athletes just have their own area that they're taking care of. Um, no, it was, it was good. Okay, all right. And... That competition, you place eighth. Um, did the judges give you any reason? Which is top ten, and depending on how many competed, in my opinion. And I know with athletes, you know, y'all are more hard on yourselves, and this kind of the mentality, like from that old um, Will Ferrell movie, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, to me, in my opinion, if you're top ten in anything, then, hey, give yourself a pat on the back. You placed eighth, if I'm... Um, not mistaken, right? Yeah. So, um, how how was that for you? Um, I don't know why I keep saying this. Everything's yeah, a okay. blur. Everything's <laughs> a blur. Um, just getting there and experiencing it for the first time, and just with every show, you get to stage day, and you're like, "Oh wow, I look great. How am I gonna get better?" And then you get better, and mm. so that was the biggest thing. Um, but I know as I keep working on it and going through peps preps and specifically working on myself for that period of time um I was happy with how I went um I think my coach asked and I don't um remember any like specific feedback I mean it's always bring up my legs but yeah but um keep showing up composure just stuff like that what do you mean by uh by composure um just not looking nervous and stage ah and, okay confidence okay yeah that makes sense because I've I noticed some and even with the men too it's like they get on stage and they just stuck in a smile like the smile like that smile right there's like mm -hmm. the whole time it's like okay you're not gonna relax and now I get it because then you know it's like well might as well keep the smile on then to look nervous or whatever it's just hide behind your smile kind of thing I, I get that all right um not composure maybe like poise okay gotcha so what's what's the hardest part of of training uh, for you? Um, probably just making it all work within your day. Just you have like eight things to do just for prep, and then you have to work and cook and mm. keep your house and pay your bills and all that. Um, and then once you get close to the end and the energy's low, just everything is just very exhausting and draining. I don't know if it's like your body's like we're not supposed to be here we're not supposed yeah. to be this light but um that's just kind of challenging gotcha i could i could imagine um and that's the reason why i, I give so much respect and admiration to I any athlete let alone people male or female both in the world of bodybuilding regardless of what category they compete in because it's like you know you work out the gym for a minimum of you know like two hours a day and then some people like I, I had one woman on the show like she gets up at 3 a.m. and when she said that during the interview I'm like but we're here at 10 o'clock at night I was like oh thank you so much for coming you gotta get up in a couple of hours yeah. and you know I'm messing with your schedule or whatnot and you know you probably gotta do the same thing and then like you said work a nine-to-five job and then even trying to balance a social life because you know people can call themselves the most um uh, what is it introverted people but we're humans we're all we're designed to be social at some point you know at some point you're going to want to hang out with someone or 
you interact with someone on some kind of level. So in balancing that, so my hat, kudos to kudos to all you guys. It's not even being social. It's just like being nice <laughs> mm. throughout the day when you're irritated and you're hungry and you're tired and they're just going about their day. Like, don't go off on them for no reason. Just ah, yeah, I ain't think about like, calm Especially down. on a low carb day. <laughs> just like, all the low carb, carb every day, day. <laughs> the low carb day. But yeah. <laughs> think about that. Wow. Okay. Um, golly. And wow. So do you have anybody that you look up to in the bodybuilding community, male or female? Um, well, I'm, I try not to, uh, I guess overhype people. Mm -hmm. Um, cause like, we all, well, all the bodybuilders you follow, all the top bodybuilders are like physically perfect and beautiful and beautiful homes and beautiful lives. Yeah. Um, I guess the people that you see like the more raw parts, the crying on the leg press and all that, <laughs> <laughs> seeing um, just kind of the uglier stuff. Yeah. Just be like, okay, they're going through it too and they're going to get there and they're going to look like angels on stage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah question what's your favorite part of prep uh, if just, there is such a thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah just just seeing the improvements like I said like you get to stage there and like oh wow I look good this veins coming out this muscles popping and then you kind of revert and you grow and then it's time to cut down again and you're like all right 10 pounds I look good and then you keep getting leaner you keep getting harder and just just seeing you get better and better Okay. You're like, okay, I earned every single part of that. So That's right, yeah. Um, and me as a fan, like, I look on social media and, <clears throat> you know, when a person does a contest and you're like, oh, they look damn good. And then, you know, by the time their next contest is like, oh, wow, they got better. You know, it's like, you, you as a fan, you don't think they can, you know, do almost kind of like a, a movie. You know, you come out with, you know, I don't know, a Marvel movie, like, oh, Iron Man was good, and then Avengers come out. Oh, that was better, you know. Um, no, I, I totally get it, and, and as a fan, um, and I think I speak for a lot of fans out there. You know, we're just in awe. So I go and imagine an athlete like yourself and others who are actually going through it, and like, oh, okay, then that's got to be um, encouraging and motivating at the same time, right? And so, kind of want you to push yourself to get to go further and further, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, anything you could change about the sport? Uh, <laughs> that's so hard. Um, I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> I have to get curveball. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I mean, whether if it's like prize money, I, I, I'll tell you one of mine, for example. Like, I'm. Um, and correct me if I'm like, you're in your 20s, right? Mid to early 20s. I, I got a couple years on you. I'm 37. And I remember back in the day where a lot of the local, well, the smaller regional bodybuilding shows, the NPC shows, and some of the IFBB shows were on ESPN, were on Fox Sports. And then all of a sudden, they went away. And it's like, granted, you know, I know we got the internet now and we can live stream, but it's like, I pay for ESPN Plus. You know what I mean? It's like you tell me ESPA can't make a deal with the NPC or IFBB to stream at least, you know, one one show, you know, or, or a couple of shows throughout the year. But instead, yeah. like you turn on ESPN, if you got a cable provider and they're showing like stuff to me that's not even a sport, you know, sometimes they show like poker. <laughs> Poker's a game, not a sport. You know, and nothing against professional poker players I know there's a skill set to it and all that or like um what's another one I saw the other day the one the game that you you have a bag and they have it at bars sometimes like you have like a bean bag and you're throwing it you know what I'm talking about I, I can't yeah. think of the name of it if someone out there knows what I'm talking about please put it in the comments or something or shoot me a message but I see that on ESPN and it's like really this is on ESPN and y'all could be doing uh, bodybuilding or something, <laughs> it's yeah. like, the, like it's it's there. <laughs> like that's not a whole bunch of drunken guys throwing a bean bag into a wooden hole. Like that's not a sport per se. Like no, I'm not buying that. But 
I really wish somebody would, would work on that because I think today the and with the right marketing and advertising and especially with all these supplement companies because you got all these supplement companies they would buy commercial time right there so that's some of the money for it right there but I mean that'd be one thing I would change if I was you know some if I had the power or whatever but yeah that makes sense fitness isn't well bodybuilding isn't that niche anymore everybody's yeah fitness this and fitness that but uh Nah, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what are your uh, favorite body parts to train, or and favorite body part and hardest body parts to train? Um, <clears throat> I love shoulders. Um, I haven't trained biceps in so long. I'll do like two curls and it already burns. So damn. Okay. I guess that's like least now. Okay. But um, back is hard just because it's kind of hard to feel and you can't see it working. Um, even though my legs aren't there yet, I actually enjoy training legs. Okay. Because, I don't know, you're in the challenge, working on it, I don't know. What are your favorite leg exercises? Um, I don't know. You just like train whatever <laughs> you can get to, you just get to it. it, it it's, <clears throat> it's really challenging for me because my legs are uneven, so it's hard, but it's rewarding working on it. Gotcha. So it's not like, oh, this is the best, we're going to have fun, but I don't know. It's just rewarding because gotcha. like working on something you struggle with, getting better at it, improving. Awesome. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's motivating within itself. Um, final thoughts as we wrap this up. Have you ever consider even the remote possibility not that you need to it's just questions i just throw out there of switching any other divisions you'll want to try um no <laughs> i think i'm right i think i think i'm right where i need to be no i, I agree you're you definitely enough. not bikini definitely no. not bikini no for sure yeah. not wellness my upper body's bigger and i don't think i could get big enough for physique yeah yeah, physique and and which in my opinion is, is with lightweight bodybuilding, that's totally different thing of, of, of muscularity and not everyone can uh can especially women, not everyone can carry that, you know what I mean? And walking around with that twenty four seven. Yeah, make it look good when you're not stage lane. Yeah, that that too. That too. Um, plug in your uh social media where people can find you at. Um, J A Z underscore Abercrombie underscore IFBB Pro on Instagram. Okay. And that's with one Z, right? One Z. Okay. Because I remember when I was trying to find you on, I, I had been following you for a while, but then I was like, okay, what was that? I think I hit you up last week or something for the for this interview. And I was like, okay, is it, I'm thinking Jazz Jay Z like the music mm -hmm. or something. And I was like, okay, now I'm spelling it wrong. I'm an idiot. So that's just, no. that's just me. But I really appreciate you stopping down. Thank you so much. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen, Houston traffic is no joke. <laughs> Why the freeways, please, elected officials, if y'all are, are listening uh, uh, inside. But um, uh, Jasmine, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, and can you flex your biceps, your mind? Your, your biceps, your arms are incredible. That's... That, that's... If Marvel, we say Marvel, if Marvel needs a She-Hulk or something, <laughs> hit her up, please. Um, thank you again. Can't thank you enough. Everybody listening out there, please. Um, I'm putting everything in the description. Links to her Instagram, links to the website. Get the merch, all of that. You guys know, like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate it. Till next time, everybody be safe and be kind to each other. And...